Well, hello, I'm Josh, and I'm back once again with another film to tell you about. And this week, I'm talking about Peter Yates' 1968 classic, Bullet. The story comes from a novel, Mute Witness, by Robert L. Fish, and it follows a police detective named Frank Bullet, who has been put in charge of protecting a witness in a case involving a major mob boss. But one early morning, two hitmen burst in, shooting the witness and one of the detectives. After the witness dies in the hospital, Bullet decides to hide the death from the public in hopes of luring out and catching the hitman. So when it comes to Bullet, there are a few things that you will most likely hear people talk about. First being all the cool chase scenes in the film, including what's known as probably one of the greatest car chases of all time, as well as the king of cool himself, Steve McQueen, as the film's lead. And for a lot of McQueen fans, if someone were to come up to them and ask why is he considered the king of cool, they would probably just tell them to go home and watch Bullet. It's kind of hard to describe why, either you get it or you don't get it yet, but there's really nobody like him. I don't know a young actor who wanted to be a star who hasn't studied Bullet again and again and again from the way he gets into a car that gets out of a car. This is a complete performance where every single bit of physical action has its unique power. And I will say for this particular film, he had a bit of a challenge ahead of him. As in 1968, the police were not necessarily known for being cool. In fact, for the most part, they were thought of as quite the opposite. But with this film, Steve McQueen single-handedly made being a police detective look like one of the coolest jobs you could have. He based the character of Frank Bullitt off of the San Francisco police detective Dave Toshi, who later became famous as one of the lead investigators of the Zodiac Killer. And Steve McQueen even went so far as to get a copy of Toshi's gun holster to use for Bullitt in the film. Yeah, he wears his gun like Bullitt. Uh, McQueen got that from Toshi. And so the director of this film, Peter Yates, had recently gotten a lot of attention for his film Robbery, particularly for a very impressive car chase scene at the beginning of it. Steve McQueen, who loved racing cars and doing different kinds of stunts, saw Robbery and decided that Yates would be perfect to direct this film Bullet. Much like he had done on his previous film Robbery, Yates insisted on using actual locations rather than sets something that was pretty much unheard of in Hollywood at the time, hence the film being set in San Francisco. That way they figured they could be out of sight and out of mind for any of the big studio execs out in Hollywood. And the crew used this new lightweight camera, which allowed them to get into tight corners and follow action that the bulkier cameras couldn't do. And this gives the film an almost documentary feel that had been rarely seen before in a Hollywood film. Now if you were to look at any of the movies that were made in the UK at the time, from directors such as Richard Lester or Tony Richardson, who Peter Yates had actually worked with, you would see that this kind of filming was fairly common in Britain. I mean, a good example of this would be the Beatles film, A Hard Day's Night. I mean, that is pretty much all shot on location. And so this is the background Peter Yates was coming from, and he really used this to his advantage when he came to Hollywood. And so with Bullet, I've always loved how Peter Yates is able to take the grounded, more realistic settings filled with real nurses and real doctors and film them with really stylish camera movement and very creative angles. It's really hard to compare it to anything before it. The break-in scene at the beginning does a great job of setting up this stylish yet realistic film and tells a whole story within itself, perfectly complementing the creative titles that were created by Pablo Ferro, who had just a few years earlier created the titles for Dr. Strangelove. Now, as I did mention before, there is a somewhat famous, okay, really famous car chase scene in the middle of this film that if you haven't heard of, you definitely need to see. The idea of setting two major American cars, the Ford Mustang and the Dodge Charger, head-to-head -head against each other in a street chase was completely unheard of at the time. Really any car chase that did not involve just a lot of wide shots of the stuntmen driving and then cutting to the close-ups with the main actor in front of a rear projected screen was a rarity at best. So to have Steve McQueen poking his head out of the window to prove that he's actually driving automatically made for a mind-blowing scene back in the day. And on top of that, it's also a really great chase. This film won the Oscar for Best Editing, and many points to this car chase scene as a big reason why. 
It's very real, very gritty. As you can see here, they got so real that they took out a camera while making a turn. But in the end, they made a chase which has become one of the greatest car chases ever. That being said, I'm sure there are some people that are coming into this for the first time that might possibly be a little underwhelmed by it. Since camera equipment, editing styles, and special effects have come so far since then, I'm sure some people might find it a bit slow in comparison to the latest Fast and the Furious film or even something like Edgar Wright's Baby Driver a few years ago. And yes, I suppose these newer films have objectively more going on with them and are technically more impressive. But with Bullet, I think it's important to note how much of an impact this would have on the movies that follow it. I mean, a few years later, William Friedkin cited Bullet directly as not only being one of his favorite films, but also as being a reason for his chase in The French Connection, which has gone on to become another classic car chase. Another part of Bullet that I can't talk enough about is the music. The score was done by the great label Schifrin, who most people would recognize as composing the Mission Impossible theme. But he also scored a ton of great films like Cool Hand Luke, Dirty Harry, the Rush Hour movies. Enter the Dragon. And even the 60s TV show Mannix. And with Bullet, he creates this jazzy score which incorporates guitars and lots of flutes. It's very cool, very 60s, and it always comes to mind when I think of Steve McQueen. So if you'd like to watch Bullet, it's available on all the popular streaming sites as a rent or buy option. And it's also a Warner Brothers film, so I believe it's on HBO Max if you happen to have that. And physically, you can get it on DVD or Blu-ray as usual. No special box sets or steelbook editions as far as I know. But the film looks great on it and it also has a couple of great documentaries on it. One is on Steve McQueen and the other is on film editing. There's also an ad in this film which is all about Steve McQueen's commitment to reality. And it's got this kind of cheesy narration over it. He started in films as an actor. Today, he's more involved. Deeply concerned with light, deeply concerned as a filmmaker. But it's also got a lot of cool behind the scenes footage, which you may have seen inserted throughout this video. Steve McQueen works for the truth in Bullet. Well, now it is time for my comment question, and I'm wondering what is your favorite Steve McQueen film? He's made so many classics. I mean, you have The Magnificent Seven, The Great Escape, The Sand Pebbles, Papillon, The Blob. I definitely recommend checking his films out if you haven't already. And if you have, list a few down in the comments section below and start discussing. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.